Good morning. Pastor Jason will be sharing with us from the book of Romans, chapter 4. Hi, good morning, everyone. Let's look at the book of Romans, chapter 4. The book of Romans is a great scroll to us. When Paul talked to us about these contents, not only that he spoke to the Romans, he turned around or adjust the belief of the Jews. And then explain very clearly about the faith in God. So every book in the book of Romans is really wonderful. It's great. If it is not God who refute to us, it's so difficult for men to say these words. Yesterday, we read chapter 3. Yesterday, we talked about circumcision. It's not useful at all. Even after circumcision, if you continue to sin, your behaviors continue to be like that. No one is righteous. It's useless. And even no one is good doing good. Not even one. And those in the flesh, nobody can be made righteous before God by the behavior. Chapter 3 talk about circumcision is useless because your behavior is wicked. No matter how good you've been doing, it's useless. This is what chapter 3 talked about. Now, today we come to chapter 4. The topic for chapter 4 is God credits you as righteous. So we've been thinking over from time to time. So we can understand it more from studying several questions here. Chapter 3, it says that circumcision is useless. When it when comes to chapter 4, it says, yes, I received circumcision. You say that I have done wicked things. Um, I'm, I have nothing, I can do nothing because this is what human nature is about. Because the heart of people is wicked. It's about all things. I agree with this. And the Bible also said, there is no righteous people, not even one. So the argument should stop there. But the thinking of the Jews is very great. I confess that I didn't do good enough. But I do have circumcision. So Paul has to deal with a deeper root problem. Yes, I received circumcision. I'm wicked. But can you tell me that I have done circumcision starting from Abraham until now that we received circumcision? How do you say this? This is what the Jews said. This is first one. How Paul explained this. So what is the value of circumcision? From another angle, so Paul cut into this concept. The previous chapter explained that even we have circumcision, but people continue to do wicked things. But you're still under circumcision. So in, at the beginning of this chapter, of chapter 4, Paul told us what is the meaning of being blessed. That is chapter, uh, in verse 6. David says the same thing when he speaks of the blessedness of the man to whom God credits righteousness apart from works. 
verse 7, Blessed are they whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. This is in Psalm 32. When David killed Uriah, and this was being discovered, and he has written this psalm for the confession of his sins. He said, yes, God, I have greatly sinned against you, but if I can be forgiven, I'm blessed. Or we say that this person is blessed. And who is this person? That is to say, anyone whose transgressions are being blocked or being forgiven or covered, then this person is called blessed. So let's not say uh, why we, we, we receive circumcision first. So what you need is, um, you don't have to think whether you have received circumcision or not. Instead, you should think whether your sins could be forgiven. This is much better. The main point is you have to be forgiven. And we say that everyone has the chance to be forgiven. So this is how he, he explained clearly about this concept. Then he continued to say why you have to receive circumcision. Abraham received circumcision. Therefore, Abraham becomes the father of all those who are circumcised. This is the first function. The second is, Abraham received circumcision, and this is a confirmation. And this um, sign shows us that Earlier, he was made righteous by God. So there is some value in circumcision. But the main point here is said, at the beginning, Abraham has faith in God. This is how Paul deal with this concept. Then he went on to say in verse 9, Is this blessedness only for the circumcised or also for the uncircumcised? The main point is whether we receive circumcision or not. The main point is man receive the blessing from God. Even though I have done a lot of wicked things. I have transgressions, but I need to be forgiven by God. I have to become this blessed person. This concept is right. Uh, and the Jews, uh, they are troublemaker. Even though the concept is clear to them, but they had to use their own mode to explain to them so that they understand more thoroughly. Use um, the, the, the four Moses, the four gospel of Moses. Uh, sorry, I, I might have make, um, make it confusing. So Paul has to talk about this concept using the book of Moses, the five books of Moses. So the concept is Abraham was justified by faith. So he was credited as righteousness uh, under what circumstances. So this is a very important question. 
So I continue to talk about verse 10. So under what circumstances was it credited? Was it after he was cir circumcised or before? So we go back to this root problem, a question. God once promised Abraham, your descendants will be as numerous as the star in the sky. And then God credited him as righteousness. So he continued to develop until that he continued to walk with God and he becomes like a perfect man receiving circ circumcision by God. It has taken 20 years. So it's just like the Jews, um, they, they hold on to circumcision. This is their concept. By trusting in their behavior or by circumcision, this is not good. You have to go back to the original point. How can we be credited as righteousness? It's only when we have faith that God credit us as righteousness. That's why circumcision has is only a sign. Then Abraham was made the father of all nations. So all nations refers to the nations beyond Israel. The book of Romans is, is written uh, for the Gentiles. So we become people of all nations. And we can let Abraham become our father. How can we become the sons of Abraham? It's not by circumcision. Because all the Gentiles, they have not received circumcision, but we relied on the faith. So now the, the position of Abraham is being explained clearly. The concept of the Jews in the past is that I received circumcision and I am the Abra Abraham's descendants and we are the people of God. Even though our nation has fallen and destroyed, and we are so proud of ourselves, God will surely care for us again. Why? Because we have the sign of making a covenant with God. We receive circumcision. That's why we are proud of ourselves. Our country has been destroyed for so many years and we're still good. Then Paul talk about Abraham. He is the father of all nations. He's credited as righteousness because of his faith. So the Jews just stood there. And there are so many nations around them. Many people of the nations. And we can call Abraham as our father. This is by faith. When we have faith, we can be connected with Abraham. This is the main point in this chapter. God credits you as righteousness. As long as we have faith in Him, as long as we have interaction and relationship with God, and God will say that we are righteous person. I think this concept is clear to us. When I discovered that, the concept of man is clear, but other 
aspects or other areas cannot be very clear. On the one hand, you know that faith is important. But on the other hand, you want to rely on your behavior to become righteous. So to a certain extent that you say to this person, God is not asking you to do this, and you say, oh, this is true. That God has given you strength and given you grace, and you can do it. Otherwise, you can't accomplish a lot of things. Or you think this is true to you. And then you say, I have to rely on God. But not long after that, if you think that uh, you don't continue to work, um, no ministry, then you don't feel good at all. My, my, this is my feeling when I read this chapter today. It's good to have faith. I, I should put it this way. I really thank God because we have faith. And then we put faith aside. Yes, I have faith. And then I continue to become righteous by works. If I have not um, make every effort to work, then I don't feel good. If I don't lay down myself and do my very best, then God is not pleased with me. And then my boss will not like me. And then my cell leader will dislike me. And this is our own problem. Why do I come to church? Oh, because I already believe in Christ, so I come here. Thanks God that I have cell group, that I'm happy. Or if I have no, I'm not, if I'm not becoming cell leader, it seems that my cell leader is not comfortable. Or if I'm, I'm not becoming a cell leader, then I cannot graduate from Bible school. Or if I'm not becoming a cell leader, Pastor Joshua might not like me. And then you, you make every effort to become a cell leader. Oh, once you become a cell leader, you find a, a lot of hardship. Just like uh, being a parent, then there's a lot of hardship. Because every uh, different children, they have different problems. And you don't understand now you have two children and they have different characters. And you have several cell members and oh, they are uh, so difficult to you, so tiring for you. And you start to think, oh, I better not be a cell leader. And if I do this, my cell leader will be disappointed with me. Will my uh, pastor dislike me, displease me? And we continue to fall into such cycle. On the one hand, in my mind, I know uh, we have to rely on faith, on my faith. Yes, I'm a Gentile. I receive God's grace. Oh, this is really good. Oh, if the Jews don't understand, oh, it, it doesn't matter. It's their own problem. But I could see it clearly. Yes, Abraham is the father of all nations. And I can follow him to be his sons and descendants, to be the descendants of faith. This concept is very correct. Then I don't need to change um, other people's concept. This concept is good to me. Then, as I continue to move forward, I 
made myself righteous by work. Then I, for, I have forgotten how come at the beginning when I came to the church, then I was very rejoicing. I remember there are two uh, moments of time that I was so happy. Uh, several days right after baptism. When I look at the world, everything seemed good. But as I'm used to it, then it seems that uh, my passion died down. Another instant is after I was set free from healing and deliverance. And several days later, oh, I feel really good. But after a while, it seems that mm, every day is just more or less the same. And my joy can be begin to disappear. And a lot of sufferings came. Because I was working in the marketplace, I have this pressure of meeting targets. Like in the cell group, I, I face a lot of confrontation with people. And then my joy disappeared gradually. Sometimes I went to visit uh, patients with serious illness. Oh, you feel that? Oh, I, I better not. I better not th um, think about all the negative things. It's good to have God. It's most important for me to believe in God. And after you, you went to the funeral service or visited patients in the hospital, then you feel um, your your strength is renewed. But after a while, it seems that your joy is being stolen. I think, um, as Gentiles or us, it's very easy for us to fall into such situations. To the Jews, it seems that uh, their faith has fallen, leaving behind only circumcision. But they can, and then they continue to do wicked things. And you tell them, there, there is no one righteous, and they have nothing to say. Then they respond to you and say, yes, we have received, we do receive circumcision. I think it's useful. This is the problem of the Jews. It's the same to the Gentiles. The faith of the Gentiles will fall. We might have forgotten um, at the very beginning how we believe in Jesus, how we say the sinner's prayer. And he received Christ at that time. Uh, to our co-workers, at the beginning, how we re responded to God's calling for a full-time ministry, we were so joyful. Or after being healed and delivered, then we have joy. However, we are more or less the same like the Jews. It's very easy that we have all our grace and joy fallen. We receive this grace from God and all these blessings. It's because of our faith. Because at the very beginning, we have overcome. This is by our faith. How can we continue to maintain our joy? We must continue to have faith in God. Continue to interact with God. So in all the matters, continue to interact with God. And 
And this joy will continue. I, I give you an example. For example, I'm distant from a certain person. Uh, it seems that it's not having a lot of problem, but we have not been contact contacting with each other. But our relationship is lukewarm. But at the end, when you look for him again, then oh, it seems that you feel the joy again. Or due to some reason, after half a year, you have no relationship or no connection at all. And the relationship becomes so cool. I continue to live my own life. Uh, maybe that person is my uh, primary school student. I have some uh, memory, but not real having relationship. It's the same when we interact with God. Once we have very good interaction with God, and this is by my faith. And we need to maintain this interaction. And once we believe in God, we have to continue believing in Him, because God will continue to lead us. Because Abraham said to God, you have to leave your household, your home country, your family, and you have to walk across the earth. And you will become father of all nations. So he, Abraham continued to interact with God. It's the same for us. We need to do this. We thank God because he created us as righteousness because of our faith. And we need to maintain this faith. Continue to interact with God. Continue to interact with Him. And your interaction with God will become more real. And your faith will not fall apart. Let's pray for God to help us.